What happens when a pastor turns a Sunday sermon into a complete spectacle or a clown show? Who cares? <laughs> I lift my hands in the sanctuary. I lift my hands to give you the glory. I lift my hands to give praise. And we will praise you. Don't care so much. It's just a temple. Syrup all over the communion. Don't care so much. Over the Bible too. Y'all stop acting like you care about this. I mean, man, stop acting like this matters to you. Pouring syrup on the Bible while preaching on stage? Can you actually believe that? Well, I believe that I can. After all, it was the great Charles Haddon Spurgeon who said that a time will come when instead of shepherds feeding the sheep, the church will have clowns entertaining the goats. And in today's video, we are looking into one of the latest stunts from Transformation Church lead pastor Mike Todd, which might just be the final straw, but to be honest with you, these so-called pastors never cease to amaze me. And in today's video, you will see why it's time for you to walk away from fake pastors like Mike Todd. This could very well be the moment that should have ended his career. Watch this. Um, we were closed for COVID and um, just had about 200, 300 people in 1519 while they were finishing the construction here. And I, I went up and preached the message about seeing vision clearly. And um, I mean, it was powerful. And I did this little example with saliva. And it kind of turned into a big deal. <laughs> what is the source of this? Where does this come from? Answer, Satan. This is satanic. This is satanic. This is not just off-centered. This is satanic. And I try to do extreme things to help people get it. And yesterday across the line. Now just think for a second. Could you imagine a Mormon doing this to the Book of Mormon? Or a Muslim doing this to the Quran? Absolutely not. Mike Todd's ministry at Transformation Church has crossed the line, moving from what they were supposed to do, teaching the Bible, to turning the sacred into a prop for his blasphemous acts and wild illustrations. His latest act is not just shocking. I mean, this man has almost done it all, from a treadmill on stage, to a bench press, to doing backflips on a trampoline in the middle of the church, to a bed on stage. The list goes on and on. And now this. One of his latest acts is not just shocking, it's a clear sign that his ministry is no longer about God but attention and I for one have come to the realization that those pastors those so-called preachers are simply attention seekers although people will not be happy about this well I said it they are attention seekers and entertainers as believers we need to be on the alert we need to be on guard against these ravenous walls the church should be a place where the name of the Lord Jesus Christ the King of King and the Lord of Lords should be lifted up in worship not a stage for entertaining performances that only mock God and his word the song Psalmist David acknowledges God's word as supreme in Psalm 138 verse 2 which says, I will worship toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. What Mike Todd did dishonored God's name and his word. And it's time we seriously question where his ministry is leading the people who follow him. The average scenario in North America with regard to churches, by and large, the churches are democracies, and I don't want to get into the ifs or pros or cons of that. But here's what happens. Because the preaching of the gospel is so low, the church is basically the majority of it are carnal, lost people. And because it is a democracy, they by, by and large govern the direction of the church. And because the pastor doesn't want to lose the great number of people, and because he has wrong ideas regarding evangelism and true conversion, he caters to the wicked in his church. And his little group of true sheep that belong to Jesus Christ are sitting there in the midst of all the theater, in the midst of all the worldliness, in the midst of all the multimedia going, we just want to worship Jesus and we just want someone to teach us the Bible and pastors are going to pay for that. I'm not in covenant with a person. I'm not in covenant with a political party. I'm in covenant with God Almighty. I am God Almighty. I am blessed, prosperous, redeemed, forgiven, talented. I've done it over and over and over and over and over again. But if I do it one more time, 
Now, obviously, Mike Todd isn't the first to turn the pulpit into a platform for entertainment. We have seen this with other big names in the prosperity gospel movement. Preachers who use flashy tactics to draw in crowds at the expense of true biblical teaching. But what Mike Todd did took things to a whole new level of sacrilege. But before we get deeper into his horrible actions, let's go back to the background behind this controversial ministry. Try to get away from me. Mm -mm. I might be old, but I lift, bro. Ever you do not tie, it's like you are robbing your father. Can you imagine yourself robbing your father? Ground. Get on the ground. Yo, D, D, tie his hands up. Tie his hands up. Hey, man, check his pockets. Run his pockets, man. What you, what you got? What you got? What if I told you? That the tithe was training wheels. The tithe was never meant to be God's highest expression of generosity. The tithe was never meant for new believers to use as an excuse to give marginally. He just wanted the tithe to be. He just wanted it to be training wheels is there to teach you how to give. Mike Todd's rise to fame has been very unpopular. He has been open about his troubled past as a wild teenager with questionable decisions that led him into a dark path of sexual addiction and vice and ultimately an arrest. While his testimony of turning his life around might be inspiring to some, it's clear that his approach to ministry is more about media buzz and entertainment value than spiritual depth. Since taking over as lead pastor at Transformation Church, Todd has embraced a celebrity status, pushing the boundaries of what's acceptable in a church setting, from spitting on a man's face during a sermon in 2022 to this latest incident of pouring syrup and cream on the Bible, it appears that no stunt is off limit for Michael Todd. <laughs> oh, yeah, because the vision I'm about to give you, it might get nasty. And do you, do you hear and see the responses? And I try to do extreme things to help people get it. And yesterday it crossed the line. On January 28, 2024, Mike Todd did something that left many people speechless. Watch carefully the shocking events that happened during this Sunday service. I lift my hands to give you the glory. I lift my hands to give praise and we will praise you. It's just a temple. Syrup all over the communion. Don't care so much over the Bible too. Y'all stop acting like you care about this. I mean, man, stop acting like this matters to you. He poured syrup and cream all over the Bible. Yes, you heard that right. He drenched the word of God in sticky syrup and cream all in the name of making a point. But what point was really made? Was it about God or was it about Mike Todd's need to shock and entertain? Well, as expected, the reaction was swift. Social media blew up with reactions, many were horrified, while some diehard fans tried to defend the act. And that's always those people to whom Mike Todd is apparently a god. And by that, I mean he can do no wrong in their eyes. But let's be real, how can you defend treating the Bible like this? Even those who aren't religious could see how wrong this was. And yet, some of Todd's followers were quick to overlook it. They are more loyal to the men than the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Why? What, what was the purpose? I try not to make too many comments without seeing the full context that was yeah. going on. But I would just say this, like him and a lot of other social media pastors that we really see, um, it's almost like they feel like they have to have these viral antics yeah. um, to try to draw people in and to get attention and do stuff. And sometimes it just go too far. 
I'm not, I really don't subscribe to his teaching at all anyway. Pouring syrup and cream on the Bible isn't just an over the top illustration, it is downright disrespectful to the Christian faith. The Bible isn't a prop for attention grabbing stunts, it's the holy word of God, meant to guide us, teach us, and be revered. What Todd did was completely unacceptable. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, the Apostle Paul, writing to Timothy, says, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. The Bible is a means to transform lives, not a visual aid for stunts. By using the Bible in such a way, Todd isn't just misrepresenting scripture, he's mocking it. This is serious, and it's something every believer should be concerned about. This isn't just about one shocking act, this is about the direction Mike Todd is leading his congregation. The Word of God is central to our faith. It's our guide, our source of truth. When a pastor disrespects the Bible, it's a sign that something is deeply wrong with them. Jesus warned us in Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 20. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous walls. Todd's action should make us question, is he leading his church towards Christ or worldly entertainment? Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 tells us, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, think about these things. Now let me ask you something, where is the honor in what Mike Todd did with the Bible? Where is the purity? His actions are the opposite of what this verse calls us to. His actions over time only confirm a troubling reality in the church that also ties back to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. This sort of crescendo in 2 Timothy where Paul is giving this admonition to his protege Timothy. He says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and by his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. Why? Why is he urging Timothy so passionately to hold on to the gospel? Verse, next verse. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and will wander off into myths. As for you, Always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Timothy, there's going to come a time when people will gather at the feet of false teachers. There's going to come a time. People ask me all the time, you know, why is it? Why is it that these heretics and false teachers have such vast ministries and such far reaches? Because the Bible's true. False teachers are God's judgment on people who don't want God, but in the name of religion, plan on getting everything their carnal heart desires. That's why a Joel Olstein is raised up. Those people who sit under him are not victims of him. He is the judgment of God upon them because they want exactly what he wants and it's not God. So you get a Benny Hinn in there who all he wants to do is tell you you're going to have a Mercedes Benz. Those people aren't victims. They're, he is God's judgment upon them. They want what he wants and so they accumulate him to themselves along with all those other teachers because they teach exactly what they want. Do you see that? They will turn away from biblical teachings to entertainers. They will turn away from true preachers to clowns to entertain them. Fables designed to entertain, not to edify. I've always seen the Bible as something precious. It is in fact something precious. Something that holds the truth, that can change lives. To see it treated like this is not breaking. It's not like we don't have enough people ripping the Bible and cursing God on live TV already. We already have that. So why do this? This isn't just about being offended. It's about recognizing recognizing that something sacred has been turned into a gimmick. And I just wonder how many other pastors are doing the same thing. Not to teach or to edify, but to entertain. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 11 reminds us, Because they don't love the truth, God shall send them strong delusion that they will believe a lie. Now let me ask you this, are you under a delusion that finds this kind of behavior acceptable? If you are part of Transformation Church or follow Mike Todd, it's time to take a hard look at what's really happening. Is this what church is supposed to be? Are are you being led closer to God or just being entertained? 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 tells us, Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. If your church is more about a spectacle, a show, or entertainment, then it may be time for you to look for a new church. And, and I'm asked that question, I'm frequently asked that question, why is it? Why is it that, that, that God allows 
these false teacher, teachers to prosper, these false churches to grow. Why, why, I mean, why is it? If I was God, I, w- I would just like... It's mushroom cloud, man. Just right there in the middle of TV, somebody opens their mouth and tells a lie and then... these false teachers prosper? Why do these false churches grow? The answer is because the Bible is true. Listen to it again. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. Having itching itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves or heap up for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and will wander off into myths. False teachers will prosper and false churches will grow. And it will happen because the Bible is true. Too often, many Christians follow pastors because of their charisma, not because of their commitment to the word. But charisma isn't what will get you into heaven. The truth is, God accepts us as we are, but he doesn't want us to stay that way. We are called to repent, to turn away from our sin, and to pick up our cross and follow the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mike Todd's syrup and cream stunt isn't just a mistake, it's a sign of a deeper problem. Are you willing to overlook it? Or will you choose to stand for what is right, for what is biblical, for what is holy, for what is Christ-like? There is a world out there that hates the gospel because they love their sin. And we're seeing this right now today. They hate the gospel because they love their sin. And the gospel is proclaimed, but then there are false teachers who are scratching itching ears. And for example, same-sex marriage. There are people out there who are now moving away from preserving the truth and basically are saying, you know what, I I am a Christian and Christianity is wrong. I am embracing this lifestyle. And the world says, yes, the enlightened ones. And the end result is those who are holding fast to the truth are now further marginalized as people say this is real Christianity because they're open, affirming, and tolerant and you are absolutely not like Jesus because you are a hateful bigot. Are you following a pastor who follows God's word or one who uses it as a prop? Are you sure you are being spiritually fed or just entertained where you worship? True worship honors God's word. It does not treat it as a joke. If your pastor is more focused on creating viral moments than leading you in truth, for the sake of your faith, your family, your wife, and kids, it is time to leave behind teachings that don't align with scripture. Know God for yourself. Seek him in truth and find peace that surpasses all understanding in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do not settle for less. Do not follow a clown who is set to entertain the goats, but follow a preacher who opens the word of God and teaches the word of God to you so that you may be edified and grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is it for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If this is your first time on the channel, like and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one.